So this is Cube's successor to the very popular i7 book. It's been upgraded now with a Core M37Y30 with a maximum turbo of 2.6 gigahertz. It still retains four gigabytes of RAM and the SSD now has increased from 64 gigabytes to 128. So it supports an optional keyboard dock, which is a transformer style one. So we have a reasonably good layout of keys there. We've got most of the buttons you'd want on there, page up and down, print screen. One thing that is missing on there is buttons to control the actual screen brightness, which I do like to have on there. So docking it is very easy. There's 10 pogo pins there and the stays. And you simply, all you need to do is just hold it up and then the magnets take care of the rest that docks in. Now you can reverse the tablet around. So if you wanted to have it in presentation mode, it's quite easy simply just to undock it, spin it around. And those USB ports on the side of the keyboard dock will still actually work in presentation mode because of the 10 pin poker port that it has on there, the design of it. Now when closed with the keyboard, the weight of it is 1.36 kilos, which I don't think is too bad, but I mean, it's not the lightest device, does pack a bit of power in there, however, for what it is. Overall, the build quality is quite good. So for ports, going from left to right here, we've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that supports microphones, micro SD card slot, the type C port. Now it's USB 3.1 spec, so it supports data, charging, and display out all at the same time if you have a compatible dock, which I do, and it's working perfect just like the i7 book. Now below that is a USB 3 port, and that's micro USB, so you need to use the included adapter they give you in the box, which is this one right here. And then if you're not gonna be charging via type C, you can use that DC 12 volts in for charging there. So on the rear, there's an autofocus five megapixel camera that takes an okay photo. I mean, it'll be good for taking a photo of a diagram or text or something like that. And then we do have metal volume up and power buttons there. That little dot next to the power button, that is a reset button for the bias. Finally, on the right side, there are two speakers. Now, because they're both on the right, we don't get really good stereo separation. They lack volume. They're not very good sounding speakers. If you've seen my unboxing, you would have heard them. They're not really the best. The keys on the keyboard, they have good travel to them. Now, it's not the quietest keyboard when typing on it. There's a little bit of noise to it, but you'll notice that when I'm typing and pressing down normally, it's super rigid. There is no flex in it. There's no bounce, which I really like. Now, if I push super hard, you'll see it's actually like, like the whole keyboard is moving down there. But a good keyboard to type on. Now, I can't say the same positive things about the touchpad. It has this touchpad is usable you can move around good accuracy well accuracy is okay but i just find it a little bit small and it does have that swipe down gesture which i often trigger and find very annoying left and right mouse buttons i would be using a mouse instead of this touchpad me personally screen has 400 lumens of brightness it's 1920 by 1080 p it's the screen from the microsoft surface pro 2 now it has Wacom stylus support, which I'll show you in just a minute and more on the stylus, but the blacks and the colors are, are quite good, not bad at all, and very clear screen, works well indoors. Now because it's not fully laminated and there is a pre-applied screen protector, it won't fare so well outdoors. And one minor complaint I do have is the bezels, now being in white, they seem to stand out a little bit more than they did on the i7 book and the i7 stylus, which had black bezels around the outside. The stylus tech the screen supports is Wacom. So it's a stylus that doesn't actually include a battery in there at all. So you don't have to worry about replacing it with those expensive quad A batteries that you often have on those active stylus enabled tablets. This stylus has a much better experience when it comes to writing. I find it a lot better. So 1000 and 24 levels of pressure sensitivity. The end is the eraser tip there. So you can quickly just scribble something down and then flip the pen around get rid of that. Now it does work quite close to the edge there, you can see, and we're right against it and not bad at all. And the pressure levels, yes, does work as well. So lightly pressing, then the harder you press, the thicker, of course, that will be. Now because the nib on this is plastic and the screen has a plastic screen protector on it, it will get scratched up if you're pressing down. Now you can move around with your finger and then proceed to just right here. 
uh, not the best handwriting, but you can see the performance of that is very quick, very fast. Now there is a setting in Windows that you can set it to actually just only have touch input disabled when it detects the pen. So as soon as the pen is detected, the, the screen actually just does not accept any touch. And when you do that, which I don't actually have set at the moment, it is really a lot better than for writing for people who want to take notes on this. And for the purposes of this video, I didn't actually have that enabled because I wanted to show you this setting right here. So that's what you need to do. Ignore touch input when using my pen. Once that's on, things are just so much better and really very good to write on. You can see now, nothing is moving around my fingers. There will allow me to just move the page, of course, but once the stylus is detected, you see now my finger's not doing anything. If you've seen my unboxing, you would have seen a couple of these tests before. I just wanted to point out that the RAM speed is 1866 megahertz, which is the fastest the Core M3 7Y30 will support. This is faster than the other Core M7Y30 tablet I tested, which was the Teclast X5 Pro. So I did run the benchmark of the internal storage, which we get approximately 105 gigabytes free on first boot. Now those speeds there aren't the greatest when it comes to write speeds. 4K reads are low too, but the 4K writes aren't that bad. Now you can upgrade the SSD in this. If you open it up, it's an M2 22 by 42 one, and you could put in a larger, for example, 256 gigabyte one in there, which would give better performance. So taking a look now at a few other benchmarks, here's the pass mark rating, which is actually really quite good. Not bad at all. The Geekbench 4 score, again a very good score here. And I also ran Cinebench R15, which puts the performance very similar to the core i5-3317U, which I think is really good. Performance in general is really good on this machine. Everything just loads up really quick, really snappy. I am overall very pleased with how it is running. Now here is a HEVC codec 10-bit file at 90 megabits per second. It plays that just fine. Of course, the new KB Lake graphics architecture handles the newer codecs really quite well. So no problems with that. And also streaming in Chrome 4K works fine. An Edge, 4K, YouTube, perfectly fine. No problems with that. This CPU, the Core M's, I really do like. The Core M3, it can handle everything apart from a super intensive, very, very heavy multitasking, video editing, and gaming. So if you want to play like Battlefield 1 and you want 60 frames per second, that's not going to happen on this kind of platform. But for everything else, I think the performance of the Core M3 is just really, really good. Now here is the worst part of this tablet. Now Cube hasn't learnt their lesson with the i7 book, which also got too hot, and I had to actually do a thermal mod to that one, and it looks like I have to do the same thing here. 92 degrees, no thermal throttling. It seems I've set that really quite high. But that really is not acceptable. We shouldn't have to do thermal mods, and I do believe... What's missing is probably just like the i7 book, they haven't placed a thermal pad between the heat sink and then the rear alloy housing on here to transfer heat away from the chipset. So this is why it's getting up to 92 degrees. So if you're going to game on this, and even not gaming, if you have Windows Update running or you decide to run benchmarks like I have been doing now for the last hour, then it will get up to 92 degrees and perhaps even hotter than that. So really not acceptable and disappointing to see this. So to touch on wireless speeds, when I sit next to my router, well, in the same room as it, I can get the maximum speeds out of the Intel Wireless AC 316 chipset it has in here. My line I have at home is 300 megabits per second fiber optic, and it will get the full upload speeds, 300, 300. Really, really good. Right now where I am is actually through a concrete wall, and that cuts down on the signal strength, and it also limits the speeds. But it's performing really well, even under these circumstances. I managed to get 170 megabits per second download and almost 60 upload, which I'm really happy with. So wireless performance range is very good on this tablet. So now it's time to have a look at gaming performance, the fun part of the review, at least for me. 
And I'm going to test out first as Fallout 4. So 720p is the lowest it will let me at least run it in full screen mode. I have to go into window mode if I want to lower the resolution. And the settings, everything else is all on, on low here. So lowest possible settings. Let's have a look and see what kind of frame rate we can get out of it. All right, so the frame rate here is quite horrible. It's uh, 10 frames per second, 11, super choppy. So you want to run this window, maybe something like 800 times 600 if it will let you. Now, I just don't like running games windowed, really. Uh, not that I would be playing this game on a tablet anyway. At, at least not a Core M3. This just doesn't have the power. That is really unplayable. So choppy. This is Dota 2 running 1080p on the lowest settings and it's keeping above 60 frames per second. It's around 70 frames per second. So this game is a bot match, single player bot match, solo, and this is running perfectly fine. So this one is going to be very playable on the Core M3 here. And Battlefield here is just managing around 30 frames per second. This is 720p on the lowest settings. Now you could probably lower the resolution down a little more to increase performance, but I'm just going to go with this and see how that runs. Now, lighter games such as League of Legends and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, they run well in the native screen resolution. You just need to tweak down the visual settings. League of Legends, at the moment, I have set to the medium settings, and it's averaging around 60 to 70 frames per second, so it's performing really well. This is a huge step up from the Atom-based tablets that I often review. So the CPU has hit internally 91 degrees. How hot is the surface of it? I've been feeling it getting quite warm. That is 30 to 33 degrees. It's slightly warm to the touch. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would get up to. Now that is probably because Cube have not put a thermal pad between the heat sink and this rare alloy housing here. And we did run into this battery calibration issue. And what happens is halfway through around 40% or what the system thought was 40% battery life. It told me I was running out of battery. Now how to fix that is, is you need to power the unit back on, completely drain the battery. So just keep using it. It'll go now for another hour or two more until it completely drains itself, then fully charge it overnight, and then your battery gauge will be correctly calibrated. It's just a small bug that I noticed. It shouldn't be happening, but at least we can fix it. Now lastly I wanted to point out battery life, because I've been benchmarking in gaming when I started doing this video, I couldn't actually show you what I would call kind of normal use on a tablet, but it gets between four and four and a half hours. Now because I was gaming, I only managed to get three hours out of it, which is not good at all. So battery life is average, I found that all the Core M3s and the Core M's have disappointing battery life. If you want battery life, then you have to get an Atom tablet really for that. Now the performance of it is excellent. It is a step up over the i7 book. We have a slightly larger SSD, but that's really it in terms of benefits over the previous model. That is it. It comes in this white and silver color, which I think the white around the bezels just make these bezels look even bigger than they really are. I mean, they are large. Now we have Wacom stylus support, very good. This stylus is probably one of the best ones you can get on the Chinese tablets. And the rest of it, the build quality is good, the keyboard's good to type on, touchpad isn't great, the speakers aren't great either. But the biggest con of all has to be the thermals. It's still getting up to 90, 91 degrees, like the predecessor. Cube have not addressed that, which is really sad to see. All they need to do is put a piece of copper or thermal pad in there between the heatsink and the rear casing, and that would have lowered temperatures by about 10 to 15 degrees. It would have increased the rear of the tablet's temperatures, but I think it's well worth it. So if you're gonna be getting one of these, I highly recommend doing my mod. Now, if you want more information on that, just search for the i7 book thermal mod, and that will come up. You'll see my video on that. It is essentially the same thing you need to do with this tablet. Thank you so much for watching this review, and hopefully I'll see you back in the channel soon with more up and coming reviews. Bye for now.